Well, hey, 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 everyone. This is Warren Howe, and we are back with another video. So today we'll be talking about enterprise value, EV, right? What is EV? Uh, we all know what is market cap. Yep. We all know what's PE ratio. Uh, EV will suggest another valuation, potential valuation metric that we will use when we want to assess, you know, a company's valuation. So EV essentially means we take the market cap, we add on the short and long-term debt, long-term debt that this company has, minus the cash and cash equivalents that this company has. So why is this a better representation when it comes to market cap? Because essentially, if you want to be buying over the company, we want to be also taking on the debt that the company has, and also minus the cash that the company can pay off that debt. Because if we want to logically acquire a company, we will also have to acquire the debt that the company has. Now, we recently have a uh, a week of bullish thesis series where we, you know, when I personally have to assess uh, Discovery, right? Discovery's merger with Warner Media, which is AT and T's uh, subsidiary company, and we were using, you know, evaluation metrics like EV to EBITDA. Now I'll be sharing a little bit about that later, but essentially, why should why is EV relevant, and why is EV to EBITDA relevant? So you guys already know what's EV. In my opinion, it's a more accurate representation of market cap because it adds in the debt, you minus the cash. Yep, theoretically, it's a takeover price of a company, right? And you know, we often pair this with EV to EBITDA, where EBITDA is the core operation, the core operating profits that a company can generate. Because this EBITDA means earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization of the assets that the company has. Yep. And EV over sales, which in my opinion is a better representation to price over sales ratio. So EV is a more stressed metric because the value is higher when compared with the earning potential that this company has. So what I like to do is I like to assess, you know, when it comes to growth companies, especially high growth companies, right? Lower in their life cycle, lower in the S curve. I would use EV to EBITDA, right? Of course, they have to be EBITDA positive, right? The core operations... The, the operational profit that this company can have, can earn, has to be positive. Now, what is that ratio? Is it 11x? Is it 15x? So after finding that out, we also have to assess how, how does that compare with the industry peers, right? The industry standard. So, you know, Discovery and Warner Media was a little bit of a complex uh, duty that I have to do for the, for, for the group. But essentially, what I did was I took Warner Media assets, Warner Media's equity, right? And part of the deal, the reverse Morris Trust deal, was that they have to take in, uh, essentially, it will spin off and Warner Media will pay AT&T $43 billion. So the new company that is merged between Discovery and Warner Media will have to incur $43 billion of debt from Warner Media, $15 billion of debt from Discovery, the existing debt, and you add it up to a 58B. Now, that that's where EV to EBITDA comes in because we have to assess that new debt that the new company has. We minus all of the cash that the company has, right, that Warner Media will bring in, the Discovery will bring in. And we also want to assess the current market cap that these two companies can essentially have. So when we work out the EV, we will also want to work out the potential EBITDA that this company can generate. And we came to about from a range from 12 to 15x. So understanding the business model, we want to be taking streaming DTC service, right? If we want to have an Apple to Apple play compared with Netflix, compared with Disney. Now, the thing to, to note about EV to EBITDA is that if, let's say, the new company right, which is, we call it new company, right, which is Discovery and Warner Media. if their EV to EBITDA is lower than Disney or lower than Netflix, should, is, does this indicate a buy? So this is something that people don't understand or, you know, or don't talk about too much. 
That's that's why the qualitative analysis of a particular company matters so much. Because even if the metric is lower, should this new company deserve a premium? Now, this will depend on their product market fit, product market fit, which we always talk about, their revenue growth rates, the adoption of how people will see their content when compared against Netflix or Disney Plus, right? Discovery has their own content, you know, Warner Media has HBO, all these sort of content. So a lot of metrics take place, but why are we doing EB to EBITDA is because we want to essentially see how this company is cheaper. Now, if obviously the lower the metric, the cheaper, right? The higher, the more uh, premium. But other other than just assessing and do be fi- too fixed, people often get too fixated on metrics, on multiples. So what we want to do as a holistic view is to be looking at the whole company's model, which I took a lot of time on for the discovery merger, and uh, you know assess qualitatively, assess quantitatively and assess what is the growth rate potential in X amount of years that you want to hold for this company. Yep. So just to wrap it up uh, on EV and EV to EBITDA, basically it is a better representation and more useful than PE ratio because PE ratio doesn't incur, doesn't factor in debt. Yep. So useful to measure CAPEX in heavy industries because, you know, with high DNA, depreciation and amortization because we already factored that in. So similarly, it can be more effective than PS ratio because PS is you know PS is just based on market cap divided by the sales. But in this condition, we already assess the whole you know not not exactly everything, but the long term the the potential debt that the, this company incurs, minusing off the cash that the company has. Right, we want to buy out and you know acquire a takeover price. Yep. Uh, so this is hopefully you found something some value out of this. And this is the metric that I personally use, especially on growth companies, to uh, you know to deem a peg a deem a, a valuable metric, right? To to peg a valuation metric on them. Yep. And I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.